Rifled slugs are widely misperceived by shooters. Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tell Flare Mouse. Today we're gonna to be addressing those misunderstandings and how those misunderstandings are still perpetuated even today. The rifled slug, also known as the foster slug, has these mysterious ribs that are angled along the side. And a lot of people have doubts whether or not these angled ribs would impart a spin as it travels down the barrel of a smoothbore shotgun. Let's first look at the patent filed in 1943 by the inventor Carl Foster. Now I don't know if uh, lawyers used really weird grammar in 1943 or if this was just typed up by Little Abner, but we can see that the slug is made to be used in a smoothbore firearm and the helical ribs which by their frictional engagement with the barrel of the firearm and the cartridge shell from which the projectile is discharged gives the projectile a rotary movement. In other words, the ribs are there with the assumption they will give the slug spin. So it says, well, that's gonna make the thing spin like rifling wood with a bullet. The smoothbore shotgun does not really grip the rifling on a slug. So there's a lot of experts that kind of repeat the same thing, that the ribs are just for looks, that make you feel good, and they don't actually impart any spin at all. And they always add, it's, they're there so that they'll swedge down a choke. So why is the rifling there? So that it, that slug will fit down different chokes. Let's again look at the drawings of the patent from 1943. And it definitely differs from today's foster slug, which is just made out of solid lead. The original design had an insert, not made out of a really heavy metal, but a light material, either wood, plastic, or aluminum. The slug was a lot more sophisticated than I ever imagined it to be. We typically think that a foster slug gets its stability by being nose heavy like a shuttlecock. So it's really odd to me that they're using a really lightweight material in that space. I would love to be able to find some of these old foster slugs, test them out and see how these actually worked. Now the drawing also shows what the slug looks like before it's fired and what it looks like after it's fired and it obtuates. And obtuation is the resistance of a heavy object like a soft lead slug from moving when it's rapidly accelerated. The slug will compress and expand under its own weight and will fit tightly in the barrel. The slug is now shorter and wider than it originally was. And the ribs on the slug are now almost completely flattened out. So how could those possibly impart any kind of spin or help the slug swage through a choke? Now apparently no one ever thought of just filming a foster slug with a high-speed camera to see if it spins or doesn't. In every shot that we took and filmed, we did see the slug rotating in the predicted direction, clockwise. Rifled slugs do indeed spin. It's not very fast, but they do spin. And by comparison, these slugs were shot through a full rifled barrel, and they spun much faster. Oh! I hope you got that on Kronos. Oh yeah. But how fast is that slug rotating in real time? Is it 10 RPM or 1000 RPM? Let's find out. In order to visualize how fast the slug is spinning, I spun a quarter, filmed it for one second at 8800 frames a second. When the second hand moves, we'll begin counting. Now this is the same frame rate I filmed the slug at, in case you were wondering. And if I were just to play this out in the normal speed here, it would take over two and a half minutes and that would get a little boring. So let's speed it up a little bit. And I figured in one second, the coin isn't gonna decelerate that much. And this will give us a pretty good idea about how fast that slug is actually spinning when we compare this footage to the slug spinning. So in one second, that coin spun 12 and a half times. Multiply that by 60 and we get 750 RPM. That's about what my truck idles at. In this very short amount of time, both the quarter and the slug make one quarter of a revolution. This is enough speed to keep the quarter from falling over, and the angular momentum certainly must add stability to that slug. 
and this is why they put the angled ribs on slugs. They could have made them straight if it was just so they would swage through a choke. Now if you enjoyed this video and thought it didn't suck, be sure to hit that like button. And if you do think it sucked, go make your own damn video. And if you know what channel says that, let me know. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.